it is Miss Katie here, and I have another Bible lesson for you all today. Today, I don't have any children in class with me, and that is because I am recording this a little bit sooner than what I usually would, um, just because I know I'm going to be available to teach this coming Sun. Um, well, when you, uh, the Sunday that this lesson is being taught. So, uh, I am uh, recording it ahead of time so that way it is available for everyone um, to watch when it is posted and um, there will be somebody else uh, being able to teach the boys and girls who do make it to church on Sunday uh, so we are thankful for that. So for this time I do have my mask off but there is no one in the class with me today. So before we get started, let's go ahead and pray and ask that God will help us to listen and stay focused and that we will learn what it is that he would like for us to learn today, okay? Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for this day and the time that we have to be together. We thank you for the ability for the video recordings to keep going so that we can continue learning your word. And we just pray and ask that you will help us to listen to what it is that you would like for us to listen to and to learn uh, so that we may be able to tell others about you and the wonderful works and things that you do. In your son's name I pray, amen. All right, so we are going back into the Old Testament and we are going to the second book of the Bible. Does anybody know what that book is? It comes after Genesis and it is Exodus. Good job. So we are in Exodus chapters one and two. So you can see that instead of starting with the number one, we're starting with a big letter. N, very good. So that is Exodus chapter one. And you can see over here that we are in Exodus just on the other page. And I'm gonna flip and you'll see in the upper corner, You can see right here, it's still Exodus, where 1, 13 is what ends on this page, where it starts on this page. And then over here, you can find the big two. Does anybody spot it yet? Yes, up here in this corner. Good job. So, we are going to learn about baby Moses today and what happened with him. So, thousands and thousands of God's people were living in Egypt. They had been there a long, long time and they were called Israelites now. Instead of um, uh, um, Uh, well, that's what they were they were calling. They were living with the Egyptians, and um, the God's people are uh, called Israelites. So at first, the Pharaoh was kind to them and gave them land to farm and good pastures for their sheep and cattle, and he let them worship God. But when that Pharaoh had died, the new Pharaoh did not like God's people. A Pharaoh was a ruler of the land of Egypt. Pharaohs were like kings, except the people worshipped the pharaohs, and every new pharaoh thought he was a god. The Egyptians did not believe in or worship the one true god. One of the pharaohs was afraid of the Israelites, and he decided there were too many of them. Just look at them all, he huffed and worried. What if they attack us over Egypt? Let's make them our slaves. That way they cannot become stronger or rise up to fight us. And Pharaoh thought God's people would die from the hard work. But God kept blessing the Israelites. God made them strong to do the work. And he kept his promise to make them a great nation. Pharaoh came up with an awful idea. Kill all the baby boys 
uh, the, all the baby Israelite boys. He told the nurses that if a new baby was a boy, he wanted them to throw them in the river. But the Israelites' nurses wanted to obey God. They refused to kill the baby boys. A mother and a father named Amram and Jochebed had a beautiful baby bed, baby boy. Mother Jochebed was so careful to keep her baby quiet, she rocked him, walked him, and fed him. And his big sister Miriam also helped keep the baby brother quiet. They didn't want Pharaoh's shoulders to hear their new brother cry. So, Jochebed was worried, but Jochebed gave, but God gave Jochebed courage and an idea to do something brave. In Exodus 2, verses 3 and 4, it says, But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, and put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. So, that sounds kind of interesting. She made a bull, I, I believe it says bulrushes. Um, she took an arc of bulrushes for him and she dabbed it with asphalt and pitch. But do you know what she made? You can see it right here in this picture. That's right. She made a basket for the baby and she put him uh, to make sure that it was waterproof and she put him in some reeds, it said. So that might sound kind of silly and strange for her to hide a baby in a basket. because I don't know that I'd want to hide a baby in a basket. It seems maybe like it might not be exactly 100% safe, but there was more to the plan. The, mother, um, the baby's mother carried the basket and took Miriam, the baby boy's sister, with her. And the mother made sure no one saw her as they walked to the river. And they put the baby in the... Um, basket in the river among the tall grasses. And Miriam, the important job she had was to watch the basket to make sure that the baby was going to be safe. It might seem dangerous, but God was at work. God helped Jacobin know exactly where to place the little basket, and God made sure no one could see Miriam. It was part of God's powerful plan. Miriam obeyed her mother. She watched and waited, and we don't know long, how long she had hidden there, but soon something happened. So, God had led the princess and her servant down to the water, and Guess where the princess and her servant had come down to? That's right, the spot where Moses was. Now Miriam is hiding in the bushes, so she's not really seen by the princess or the princess's servant. So, God caused the baby to cry just at the right time. The servant went to the water and got the basket, and the princess exclaimed, An Israelite baby! Oh, isn't he just beautiful? The Bible says that the princess had compassion for the baby, and she didn't want him to die. She had immediately loved him. And Miriam stepped out of her hiding spot and she had offered 
the princess to find someone to be able to nurse and take care of the baby. So the princess had agreed and sent Miriam to find such a woman. Now, who do you think Miriam is gonna go find to help take care of the baby? Do you think she's gonna find a stranger to help take care of the baby? Nope, that's right. She went to go get her mom for her mom to help her take care of the baby. So, Can you imagine Marion telling her mother that the princess had found the baby and the princess wanted someone to care for her? I'm sure the two of them ran back to the river as fast as they could. And the princess said to Jacobed, the baby's mother, if you feed this baby for me, I will pay you. I'm sure that his mother, Jacobed, agreed and said, yes, your highness. So not only had God powerfully protected Jacobed's baby boy, but now her baby had been adopted by the princess and she would still get to care for him. Only God could plan something so amazing. But you know what? We still don't know the name of this baby. The princess had named him. So let's read from the Bible in Exodus 2 verse 10 what the princess named the baby. And I kind of gave it away before when I said who we were going to learn about today. Do you remember? Let's read Exodus 2.10. And the child grew and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. That's right. The princess named the baby Moses. Pharaoh thought he was a god. He thought he was a powerful man, and he thought he could get rid of the Israelites. He thought he could stop God's plan. And we have learned today that God's plan cannot be stopped. God is more powerful than anyone, even a king or a pharaoh. God's powerful plan was to use Moses in an incredible and exciting way. And we'll get to learn more about Moses and his life in the next coming weeks. But for now, let's see what's going on with our friends Michael and Emily, shall we? Crink, clunk, crunch, clank. Daddy's tools rattled against the engine and parts under the hood of the car. Michael handed Daddy another tool. Daddy shook his head and sighed. Well, that's it. That's all I know how to do. If my car won't start this time, I'll have to call a tow truck. Tow? Michael bursted out laughing. I didn't know trucks had toes. I thought they had wheels. Not that kind of toe, silly. Daddy laughed too. The T-O-W tow truck pulls the car to the mechanic shop. Oh, I get it now, Michael giggled. Daddy got on, on the driver's side, took a deep breath, and turned the king. Grr, grr, clunk. Uh-oh, Michael groaned. That didn't sound so good. Daddy just shook his head. Well, that's it. Time to call the tow truck. My car will have to go to the auto mechanic this week. I guess I will have to take mommy's car to work. But if you take mommy's car, what are we going to do? I have baseball practice. Our first game is on Saturday. How do I get to practice? Daddy shrugged. We'll figure something out. God is still in control, even when we don't think so. Daddy shut the hood, shook his head, and went inside to clean up. Soon, the tow truck showed up. It was fun to watch the mechanic place a hook under the front of the car and lift it up only so only two wheels were on the ground. It pulled Daddy's car down the street and out of sight. That night, the family discussed the car problem at dinner. Daddy announced the mechanic shop called. It's going to cost a thousand dollars to fix the car. 
We don't have the money right now to fix it. I will have to take mommy's car to work every day. But daddy, Emily whined, what about ballet on Tuesday and kids club at church on Wednesday? How will I get groceries and go to Bible study and take Michael to baseball practice? Mommy added. Michael and daddy looked at each other. Don't worry, mommy, Michael said. God is in control. Even if it doesn't feel like it, he has a plan. Michael's right, said daddy. We will find other ways to get around. Let's pray first and then think about finding a way. Daddy took mommy's car to work the next morning. Emily called Sarah. Her mother was happy to take Emily to ballet. Michael called Ryan. His daddy took Michael for baseball practice. And mommy hosted Bible study and everyone came to their house. Every day, the family prayed together at dinner for God to provide a way to fix their car. Every day, the family trusted God to help them get from place to place. On Sunday, the family all went to church in one car instead of two. Hey there, friends, Mr. Thompson greeted. Only one car today? Daddy answered, my car is in the shop. We don't have the money to go and fix it right now. Mr. Thompson thought a minute. Well, now I'll look at it. I'm a mechanic. Have it told to my place. I will fix it for no charge. You just pay for the parts. I'll be able to get them for a good price, Mr. Thompson offered. Michael almost jumped up and cheered. Daddy shook hands with Mr. Thompson. You have no idea what an answer to prayer that is, Daddy smiled. Daddy and Michael walked into church together. That was amazing. I knew God would provide, but I didn't know how he would do it. I'm so glad God has a perfect plan, said Michael. Daddy nodded. He alone will work out a perfect plan in his own time. Don't ever forget it. All right, boys and girls. What was the problem that the family had? Yeah, Daddy couldn't afford to fix the car, and they only had one vehicle for the family. So how did God help them get where they needed to go? Do you remember what Emily did for her ballet class? She had her friend's mom take her. And what about Michael for baseball practice? That's right. One of his friend's dads hooked him to his baseball practice. And mommy did host Bible study at her house, so everybody went to them. And then they went to church in one vehicle. And who did they see there that had mentioned to them what they could do? That's right, Mr. Thompson said he was a mechanic and he could help fix the car and he wasn't gonna charge them any more than just for the parts. That was an answer to prayer. So God's plan was to have the man at the church to help fix the car and he had a plan for Emily, Michael, and mommy to be able to still do the things that they needed to do that week or that they had wanted to do that week. God provided everything for them as they needed, even though the family didn't know how it was going to happen. So that's one of those great things that we know that we can always trust God and believe that he has a plan and there is nothing or no one who's going to get in the way of God's plan. Let's learn our memory verse for today, shall we? It is found in Psalm 115.3. Our God, let's see if I can get rid of that glare. Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. Let's try that again. Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. Psalm 115, 3. All right, boys and girls, I hope you've had a wonderful week and I will see you next time. Goodbye.